Here we are back again, week 12, waiver wire edition. Oh, yeah. Man, it's just, uh, it's ever evolving. Yes. It's, I, don't, I don't know if anybody could get all this stuff right. No. <laughs> <laughs> There's stuff no. happening. I, I put a tweet out there last night about, and you have to go check it out because I can't explain it here mm-hmm. <laughs> over, over the videos, but yeah, that's how it feels. Yeah. It feels like taking one down yonder, you know, numerous times every time you're watching a game. Uh, without Vaseline. Yeah, I mean, it's just like one right after another. <sighs> man. Yeah. But, I mean, it makes it fun. Oh, yeah. It's not man. so fun it if is. you're on the receiving end, but, <laughs> you know, there's no. things that are happening every week that you just don't see every year. Mm-hmm. So, in a way, that's kind of a good thing. It's making it a little bit different. Yeah. Um, Fantasy-wise, it's not so great. No. But, you know, it happens. It is what it is. That's bro. right. You can't do nothing about it, just right? got to roll with it. That's right. You got to move on to the next week. Uh, we did have a few injuries we were going to come over uh, mm-hmm. and cover. Uh, Kelvin Benjamin, Fat Kelvin, Fat Kelvin. He, uh, I don't, it hasn't come out yet. Like I said, we record this Monday morning, so mm-hmm. we don't have the details of his injury, right yeah. knee injury. It didn't look too good. Mm-hmm. The uh, <laughs> the Fat Kelvin experiment in Buffalo could have come and gone before we even knew it started. Yeah, yeah, it, it was pretty quick. I mean, I, I didn't expect him to do, you know, a lot. But come on now. I mean, the ones who actually picked up, you know, picked them up, whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're a little disappointed right now. Yeah, I mean, I didn't expect a whole lot of yardage touchdowns. Mm-hmm. I was I was hoping he'd be the red zone guy. Yeah. But he's not going to be no zone right now. No. He's going to be left out, left yeah. bench, maybe. <laughs> uh, I mean, like I said, that didn't look too good. Chris Thompson, mm, everybody's favorite one. flex play. Yeah, that was a big one. Yeah, I mean, he, that was an ugly one, too. Yeah. It wasn't quite, quite Gordon Hayward. Ugly, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but you knew the second you saw the replay that mm, he done. Yeah, yeah, that uh, that's gonna affect a lot of fantasy owners, you know, because he's he was such a big part of that. He offense. was a week in week out flex play. You didn't have to worry about it. You just stuck him at flex and you forgot about him. Yeah, uh, Donta Foreman. That was a weird one. That was a weird. He broke away. Yeah, yeah. He tore his own Achilles. <laughs> Nobody even touched him. Yeah, I mean, uh, he he was having a great game. He was starting to kind of. Mm-hmm. I wasn't gonna say he was taken away from Lamar Miller, right, right, but he was moving it more towards that fifty-fifty split, and he yeah. was doing great. Yeah, I and mean, he was busting some big runs, and that's a that's a stiff Arizona run D. That's right. <laughs> he was going off. Lamar was like, "Oh no!" When he, when he was and, then, like, and then he pulled yeah. up. And he, oh, I can't <laughs> oh, show that. Can't huh? show that. <laughs> Looking at me. But you know, on the other hand, and we'll get into this in later videos. That's mm-hmm. that's a big help for Lamar Miller owners. It is. It is. I mean, because they don't have to worry about Dante Foreman anymore. Maybe Alfred Blue. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Haven't had to worry too Maybe. much about Alfred Blue in the past. But, yeah. Uh, but we're gonna go ahead and get in some waiver wire ads. There's not a ton. <clears throat> some of these guys are obvious ones. Some of these are really deep. Yeah. Um, we'll give you guys the the obvious one that everybody and their mother is going to be talking about, just to give you our quick take on it. But then we're going to go into a uh, there's there's one on here that's pretty deep. It's pretty deep. It's man. pretty deep. It's, but it's, it's not as it's not quite as deep as saying to start playing Gabbert last week. Yeah. Hey, but that worked out though. It worked out. People who watched us listen yeah. benefited. It it paid off. That's right. So we're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, who's the first person? Don't give them the deep one off the bat. Okay. Let's work, right. it, let's work it in slow. Exactly. You know what I mean? We go right off the bat with this when people are going to turn it off. The, yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, all right. Um, I want to go Josh Doxson. You know, he, to me right now, is the number one. Um, now, you know, if Reed comes back, but okay, we all know the deal with him. So we're not even going to count on him week to week. But, you know, he had seven targets for 81 yards this past game. And I think he's going to see an uptick now. Due to the fact of Thompson being out, um, you know, Samaje looked, you know, decent, and we'll get into him later on in uh, another video. But Josh, D- Josh Doxson, to me right now, is clearly the number one option for Kurt, and um, Terrell Pryor is nowhere to be found. I don't even know so, if he plays anymore. Uh, well, <laughs> he may be the biggest offseason bust. Yeah, yeah. If there's a yeah. bigger bust, put it down in the comment section. Yeah. Tell us who was a bigger bust than Terrell Pryor this year. When Probably you, won't be. When you take into account his preseason hype. Right. Yeah, and not just fantasy-wise. I mean, mm-hmm. <laughs> you, I as mean, a team-wise, as one of the free agent signings in the offseason, everybody thought that was going to be a slam dunk. Yes. Not so much. And I mean, looking back hindsight and, and you look at his numbers, you look at his attributes and everything, he's almost reminiscent. Physically, everything to uh, um, Julio Jones. Mm-hmm. I mean, 
they were about the same size. They were in the same 40. You know what I mean? It, it was a lot of uh, similarities. And I think a lot of people were using that going into the draft and stuff. But it just didn't, uh, didn't quite pan didn't out. Didn't quite pan out. Nope. Well, somebody you just said that we were going to talk about in a later video, mm -hmm. I'm going to talk about him right now. Let's do it. Because, dang it, I want to. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Let's do it. Well, every, everybody's going to be talking about this guy. He's probably going to be the number one waiver wire ad of the week. Yeah. On all your big sites, all your big, you know, big name fantasy people are going to be telling you to go out and grab some Ajay P. Ryan. Right, right. Uh, and he is. I mean, for what it's worth right now, he's probably the best available guy out there. I mean, he's only owned on average about 30%. Mm -hmm. uh, he had a great game, 23 carries for 117 and a touchdown. Yeah. Now, is he going to get that every week? Probably not. Right. But, I mean, you're looking at a guy who really doesn't have a whole lot of competition for carries. Mm -hmm. He's obviously probably not going to be the pass catching back, but he's probably going to get you close to 20 touches a game. Yeah. And yeah. that's that's hard to find, especially this time of year. Yes. All the teams are starting to go to committees, mm -hmm. a la Philadelphia Eagles. Mm. We'll get wow. into that one. We'll get into it a later episode because I may need to. I may need to vent <laughs> on that one a little bit. Okay, uh, but no, Samaj P. Ryan. He's a great pickup. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's another guy who had a lot of preseason hype. That's true. And started off slow. Yeah, yeah I mean, yeah. didn't do anything with the chances that he had earlier in the year. I mean, he was decent, but his yards mm -hmm. per carry were horrible. Mm -hmm. I mean, he you could tell he's kind of got that power back type of vibe. He's not going to have that breakaway speed. Mm -mm. I mean, dude, never going to bust one for seventy five. No, but. Uh, he's going to get the goal line carries. That offense seems to be turning around a little bit. Mm -hmm. I mean, Samaj P. Ryan is probably somebody that you're going to have to have a pretty high waiver claim to pick up. Yeah. But if you can and you can grab him, stash him. I don't know if you want to start him this week. Maybe. They're going to have the Giants coming up. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's a chance. Usually we say start everybody against the Giants. Yeah. So, I mean, it can't be bad. You know yeah. I mean, so, yeah, if you got him, if you can get him, he'd be a great, great stash for your team. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. I mean, it's uh. Again, you can't uh, deny volume. You know, anytime you're going to get, you know, 15 to 20 guaranteed every week, that that's a plus. And that's why it's so hard to sit people like Adrian Peterson. It is. Because he's going to get 20 carries a game. This there's, is true. There's not very many people out there that are going to touch the ball that many times guaranteed a game. That, yeah, exactly. And you don't need him to bust all 20 of them. You just need him to bust one, one. of them. That's right. So, Preferably but, at the goal line. <laughs> preferably yeah. somewhere. Yeah, yeah. Somewhere other than the back of your offensive lineman. Man. Uh, yeah. So, Samaj P. Run, if you can get him, grab him. Yeah. Do it. Have fun uh, with it. <laughs> cross your fingers. Whatever. Take don't, some Tums. Don't drop him for Nelson Aguilar. Last minute. Exactly. Yeah. We won't talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, well, I want to go uh, Charles Clay. And this is kind of, you know, I guess a, a little bit away from the norm, you know, that everybody's talking about on this uh, Monday but the reason being, the Nathan uh, Peterman experiment. experiment, I think, is done. Yeah. I think. Now, who knows? I just saw people on the on the sideline holding up the fingers like when Jordan was counting his championships. Yeah. They were just counting his interceptions. <laughs> yeah. But when they got to that middle finger, they kind of held it they up for them. They kind of held that one. That was their number one. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But, I mean, you know, five interceptions I mean, in the first half. I, yeah. I, I think mean, it was the first half. That quickly. was ridiculous. So... Uh, the reason why I like Clay is because, you know, Tyrod should be back this week. And if that's the case, Charles Clay is his number one target. You know what I mean? Zay Jones is still a, a, a great talent. Shady, you know, he catches a lot of passes out of the backfield. But Clay is his numero uno. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, you didn't like that Spanish? I like it. I can't. That's you've about been it. practicing. <laughs> you've been practicing. I'm done after that's that. That's right. But, uh, again, you know, I think he's going to get – you know, the majority mm -hmm. of the targets and he's working himself back into, you know, hundred percent, you know, health wise, uh, this past game, you know, he didn't see a lot again due to the fact Nathan Peter, uh, Peterman, you know, just kind of fumbled everything about and the game script was just out of hand. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It was quickly. Nothing, yeah. It just wasn't a lot that could happen. So, and I don't ever want to talk about like players quitting. Yeah. But, mm. And maybe the Bills fans can comment on this and let us know. Yeah. To me, it kind of looked like because I watched like the first few drives of it mm -hmm. until I realized where it was going. <clears throat> I I kind of think the team kind of just didn't try for Peterman. I don't think that they felt it was right that Tyrod got benched to begin with. That's a good point. And it's kind of like they just proved a point mm -hmm. because not that Tyrod came in and lit the world on fire in the mm -hmm. second half, but yeah, he did a lot better than Peterman did. 
Yeah, yeah. And the game kind of changed a little bit when Tyrod came in, and I kind of feel like the teammates didn't mm-hmm. feel it was necessary for him to get benched, and they didn't. Yeah. I, I mean, I hate to say it's, the pro athletes are out there not trying well, because everybody's competitive and nobody wants to get beat. Yeah. But – that's just kind of what it looked like on film. It's 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 possible. I mean, I, I never looked at it in that aspect, but I, that's a good possibility. So, Bills fans, you know, speaking of Bills fans, man, I'm going to tell you something. I've seen some videos here recently. <laughs> I've been seeing somebody get, like, pile-drived off the Ooh. back of trucks into tables and stuff. Yeah, well, it's one in particular. Um, you guys can research it, but it's a uh, guy's pouring some beer down uh, the back of a person, mm-hmm. and somebody's actually drinking it. Phenomenal. Just look it up. Wow. There's some, there's some things going on, some tailgates at some Bills games. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> tailgates for real. That's right. Uh, all right, I'm going to go to somebody else who was in that same game. Mm-hmm. And this was kind of a product of what the game turned into. Yeah. But I'm going to go with Austin Eckler, mm-hmm. the running yeah. back for the Chargers. He did see more work because they were up mm-hmm. so much. But, I mean, he only had six carries for 40 yards and a touchdown. Yep. And another two catches for 18. So it wasn't huge, but... This is two straight weeks now that Austin Eckler's done yeah. something. Right. You know, and, and I can see them kind of not going away from Melvin Gordon at all. He's right. still 100% the lead guy, but they need to take a little bit of that mm-hmm. load off of Melvin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They don't want to have him get 20 carries a game and have him breaking down by, you know, week 10. That's true. So they, they're starting to work in Eckler a little bit. And the kid's impressive. He's quick. He's fast. He can catch. He's fast, yeah. He can run. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's... It, <clears throat> It's a great kind of combination between the two of them, and it's working. And yeah. so I think that they see that it's working, and they're going to start using it a little bit more. Mm-hmm. Next couple of games, Dallas, Cleveland, Washington, Kansas City. Mm-hmm. I mean, I can see him getting some work in those games. Yeah. Well, here's the thing, and I, I, I can see the evolution coming. You know, it started a couple of years ago, but now it's really uh, becoming prevalent, especially with uh, the Saints. Some of these uh, backfields has got – you know, different uh, personalities, so to say. You know, you got your satellite back, then you got your north and south type. And I think a lot of teams are going to start doing that. So in, in saying that, man, it's going to be hard to figure out what running back to get, you know, when you start drafting. Everything's going to be a committee eventually. Yeah. It's kind of like people are going to the workhorse mm-hmm. until there's an injury. And then once that injury happens or injury scare happens, mm-hmm. they start mm-hmm. slowly and slowly working the next guy in. Yeah, yeah. There's very few workhorses left. No. I mean, David Johnson might be the only one left. After a while, I mean, him, Gurley, Bell, maybe. Maybe. You know what I, I mean? I mean, I think Gurley and Bell are probably the only two I'd really put on there. I mean, mm-hmm. I don't even know about David. What do you mean, with AP? No, I mean, going forward. Oh. Whenever David does come back, whether mm-hmm. AP's there or not, mm-hmm. I mean, by losing David early as they did, yeah, that kind of hurt their whole season. It is possible. They may try to take a little bit of that load off of him. Yeah, that's true. Never know. Who's your next guy? All right, well, since we talked about, you know, we kind of alluded to it at the very beginning, and this is kind of a deep sleeper, so to speak. But, you know, if you think about it, it, it it's very possible. But I'm going with Byron Marshall. Uh, I know everybody's like, who? who? Exactly. <laughs> oh, Byron, I'm talking about you, homie. But he... With the injury with Chris Thompson, you know, he is um, catapulted to the number two behind Samaje. And strictly, he's going to be a satellite back, mainly just um, the pass catching guy. But the thing is, Samaje can't catch the ball at all. Pretty sure he wears oven mitts when he yeah. plays. Evidently. And, and, and that's going to be the issue. I mean, like I said, it's not anybody that I would say start week 12. But, I mean, I think you may want to have him on your bench just in case, if you have availability. You think he turns into their, the next version of Chris Thompson? I mean, it's possible. They don't have anybody. And, and again, like I said, we're, we're recording this on Monday. So, maybe you know, throughout the course of the week, just keep an eye on it because they could possibly you know, pick up somebody. Mm. And, you know, it's a few people that are still kind of out there. Um, Does Kaepernick play running back? He could. He <laughs> might. He should, maybe. Yeah. I mean, who knows? Um the Jones kid they had last year, a couple of years ago. Matt Jones. Matt Jones. Who knows? I don't think he's playing. I mean, he, I know he went to Indy. Yeah, I don't, know I if don't he's, even think he's um, – If he's playing. I know he's not playing. I'm going to tell you somebody, man. D. Will, uh, D'Angelo? I don't know, though. He's probably old now, and, like, he's probably stiff. 
Man, he's be- he's better than Samaje, I think. Maybe. Person. But he's just old and still. I mean, he ain't played in 11 weeks now. No, but he's wrestling. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he out there suplexing people. Exactly. Give him the people's elbow. That's right. Uh, I'm going to go, and this one is, it kind of pains me to say because mm. I never expected it to be this guy mm. out of the three in this backfield. I'm talking about the Denver Broncos. Mm. Coming into the year, C.J. Anderson, Jamal Charles. Mm-hmm. Well, now all of a sudden it seems like Devontae Booker has worked his name into the mix of getting the bulk of, of work. I mean, he ended uh, this past week against Cincinnati, 14 carries for 44 yards, five catches for 54. Mm-hmm. Uh, now Anderson did get the touchdown in the game, but Booker is slowly starting to take more and more work away. Yeah. And they got a decent schedule coming up. I mean, if you need somebody for a you know an injury replacement or something like that, mm-hmm. Booker is serviceable. Yeah, I mean, at best serviceable. Yeah, uh, I mean, he's not gonna win you a week. <laughs> no, uh, he may lose you one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, you know, this is what one the second game out of the last four games he's had double digit fantasy points. Mm-hmm. I mean, he's capable of it. Yeah, I mean, he's got the talent, no doubt. I mean. They're going to have a new offensive coordinator in Denver. Mm-hmm. Maybe they want to see more from Booker. Yeah. We really don't know yet, but it's obvious that they're not committed to CJ or Jamal. Mm-hmm. I mean, no, they no, want to no. see what this kid can do. And this may be the perfect time. They got Oakland, Miami, Jets, and Colts. Yep. And since they don't have a decent quarterback, they may want to run it all day long. I mean, would you want to have Brock Osweiler throw it all over the field? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely not. Yeah. So Devin, uh, De- Devin Booker. Who's Him Devin too. Booker? He's from basket. He's on the Suns. Phoenix. Yeah. He's a great basketball player. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> great basketball player. Wait a minute. Uh, Devonte Booker, also no relation. Yeah. Uh, deserves to be picked up and at least stashed on a bench. Yeah. Uh, another guy I want to bring up too is is Corey Coleman. He's probably. I mean, he's not highly, you know, owned, mm-hmm. but he's not somebody who's highly available either. He's right there in the mid. 50s or so. Yep. If he's available by any, you know, stretch of the imagination, go grab Corey Coleman. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we don't really know exactly what's going to happen with Josh Gordon yet. I was getting ready to say somebody. <laughs> I, I, I can see you starting to tap. I can feel your foot tapping. Yeah. So I throw it in there. <laughs> if Josh Gordon comes back, that only helps yeah, Corey yeah. Coleman because it takes off the, uh, That's right. the, uh, the defense from him. But mm-hmm. Corey Coleman has a ton of... Of talent. He plays on a horrible team who's always playing bird from behind. Yeah. And they're going to be throwing the ball constantly. Oh, yeah. And yeah. if Gordon does come back, mm. he's going to require some attention. Yeah. I mm. mean, he's not going to come back and on week one be, you know, Jerry Rice. Which one are you talking about? Uh, oh, Coleman? No, Gordon. He's not going to come back week his first week. <laughs> I know you want him to. <laughs> Yeah. But I can't see his very first professional game in a couple of years all of a sudden getting 200 yards. You know yeah, I mean? He's no, not going to go out, but but he's going to require attention, and Corey's going to be the guy who benefits from it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's already, you know, in the mix. I mean, he's being looked at by his, his quarterback. He ended this past week with six catches for 80 yards. Yeah, true. I'll take it. I'll yeah. take it all day long. You know, if he's getting that with no help, mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, any, any more help's only going to, you know, increase those numbers. Just imagine if they picked up Wentz. Like they should have, or even Dak. I mean, it 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 would have been cr- crazy. Cray cray. Yeah. <laughs> I heard I hear kids saying that. I, that's like the first time I've ever said it. Yeah, but I, I figured that was a perfect time to throw it in there. Hey, <laughs> whatever. Anyway, only last person I want to I want to bring up real quick mm-hmm. before we get into some some keep trade cuts. Mm-hmm. Uh, I kind of want to get your opinion on it because this is somebody who we've had on our start sit shows before. Okay, who. Has been a start numerous times. Mm-hmm. Got concussed two weeks ago, but then had his bye week. Right, right. So I think a lot of people are kind of forgetting about Mr. Jacoby Brissett. I like Jacoby. I like Jacoby a lot. Man. And he's going to be playing against Tennessee. Mm-hmm. And look what Big Ben did against Tennessee. Yeah. And that's Big Ben on a right. bad year. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Jacoby Brissett has that potential to maybe be somebody you could pick up and start this week. Exactly. No, I definitely like Jacoby, man. I mean, He's he's showing he's showing a, a lot of poise, you know, being um, ushered into that uh, position because of uh, Andrew Luck, and who knows, man? I mean, it just depends. He might even get to start next year, depending on you know the off season and how things go. I mean, that injury that Luck ha- uh, has, it seems. Uh, matter of fact, I've heard he may have to get uh, surgery again. Again, 
Yeah. So how many times? I mean, it's it's ridiculous, man. I mean, but yeah, I, I like Jacoby a lot. Yeah, he's he's probably he's, somebody you can you can stream this week if you need. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Perfect DFS play. Yeah. Throw him in your DFS lineups. Kind of like Blaine Gabbert. That's right. That's right. We're gonna throw that mm. one out there a couple of times. Exactly. All right. Well, this is this is a session that we're gonna get into some keep trade cuts. Yeah. One of these guys you've we've we've talked about before in this same exact segment, and we were kind of eh. I mm-hmm. want to, but I just can't yet. Yeah. But I think it's getting ridiculously close to just not even caring anymore and just hitting the drop button. Yeah. And me as an owner of this person, I know you've already told me what to do with this person. Yeah. But we still get tons and tons of questions about Jordy Nelson. Mm. Tons of people. I'm talking, I bet you I had at least 15 questions. What do I do with Jordy last week? Mm-hmm. We need to reiterate to the people because I think I finally, yeah, I finally come to terms Right. With your <laughs> suggestion. So so yeah. what would you do with Jordy Nelson? You do do unto others that they have done unto you. <laughs> that's right. So everything that's Jordy he's done, that's what you're gonna do. Mm-hmm. Throw him in the garbage. Yeah. He hasn't he's nothing. He hasn't done anything. And it's sad to say, I mean and De- but Devontae's doing all right. True. He's the only person doing all right in that offense. Yeah, and I think it's again it's because um, you know, Brent he likes him. Um I don't know. I mean, you know, quarterbacks lock, they tend to lock on to a particular target, somebody that they feel uh, comfortable with or have some type of rapport with. And I think this is, you know, him and Devontae has, have some type of connection, you know? So, yeah, Jordy, bye bye. See you later. Yeah. I mean, it's time. The time yeah. has come. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What about Cameron Brake? Hey, cut him. It, it's time. It's I'm, time. Man. OJ. Was the man yesterday. <laughs> right. And ever yeah. since Fitzpatrick took over, mm-hmm. Brate's not been... No. He ain't even sniffed the ball. No. He forgot what leather smelled like. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? The only time he touched yeah. the pigskin is practice when he's bringing the balls out to somebody because he ain't touching them in the game. No. He's... No. I don't know. I mean, it's sad because he was like the beginning of the year... Yeah. Surprise tight end. Hey, this dude is a, you know, a legit tight end one. Mm-hmm. Now? Yeah. I mean, I guess it's OJ there. That whole offense is kind of, even though they did okay this past week. Yeah, yeah. It, it's it, just kind of, yeah. It, it's one of those, you, you know, it's hard. And I mean, if you got, you know, pieces off that team, you know, it's almost like a crapshoot who you're going to play, you know, depending on the uh, matchup. But yeah, camera breaks one, you can trim the fat. That's right. All right the, the last two that we're going to do is a little bit of a, of a committee. I'm going to throw two committees at you. Yep. And you're going to tell me which running back out of those committees you would rather have. Okay. Let's. Uh, I'll give it to you a little bit easier. Let's go with Miami. You got Kenyon Drake or Damian Williams. <sighs> wow. If I you can it. only have one of them, which one do you take? Uh, I say Williams. To me, Williams seems like uh, the better of the two overall. You know, he. It seems like he's a better um, pass catching back. I I would I would think. But again, man, that's kind of like. Uh, it's kind of like, do you want onions or mushrooms? You don't, don't like either? I don't like either one. <laughs> so, I mean, you know what I mean? And see, the only reason that prior to this week yeah, that I had always been on the Kenyon Drake bandwagon mm-hmm. is it just seemed that he would produce with as little as he got. Yeah. I mean, he'd never gotten double-digit carries, mm-hmm. and he's still up in the 60s to 80 yards rushing mm-hmm. touchdowns here and there. Mm-hmm. Damian Williams kind of looked like he was – Big play dependent, and he had that big play this week. Yeah, and it helped. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. I don't think that it's Damian Williams' backfield. Mm-hmm. I don't think that it's Kenyon Drake's backfield. Mm-hmm. I think this past week with going up against Tampa Bay, he had seven carries for four yards. Drake did. Mm-hmm. That ain't gonna cut it. No. Uh, but going forward, I would I would roster either of them, mm-hmm. but I don't know if I'd be comfortable starting either of them mm-hmm. unless you know. Like two of the next three games they play is, is against New England. That's yeah. probably more Damian Williams because they're gonna have to be throwing. True. That type True. of that type of yeah. mentality is how you're gonna have to pick him going forward. Yeah. If you got to start one of them. Exactly. Uh, lastly, and then we're gonna wrap things up. What's going on with the Eagles' backfield? Man, they have 37 running backs. All of them get touches. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, 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 the whole <laughs> Jay Ajayi thing, and I'll get it off my chest real quick because mm-hmm. I was all on the Jay Ajayi mm-hmm. train. When he went to Philly. Like yeah. I was in there in the preseason. That didn't quite work out so well. Mm-hmm. I just don't understand 
how Kenyon Barner is getting goal line touches. I mean, even if it was blunt, I mm-hmm. I'd be upset that it wasn't Jay, but at least I get it. Yeah, yeah. Kenyon Barner, he's the smallest back on the team's taking away goal line touches. That <laughs> that one play alone mm-hmm. made it totally clear to me that going forward, mm-hmm. there is no lead back in Philly. Mm-hmm. There, no. I mean, Blunt had the most carries this past week. I can see that kind of alternating week to week with him and Jay. Mm-hmm. But they're going to use all four of them with Clement, Barner, Blunt, yeah. Ajayi. It's just gonna, they're out there and eating each other's fancy values. Yeah, it's it, it's almost a uh, a like a New England type of situation. Yeah, but to me, this is more difficult because they're gonna play like all five or six of them in one game. Mm-hmm. New England, they you you may get two. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Then you'll have one preferably that will get the most work, like Lewis did this past week. Uh, but that that Philly backfield dog, I don't want no parts of it. Yeah, it's it's it's, it's scary because it's like you, they're so good individually mm-hmm. on that team, especially. Yeah, you could have a solid RB one if they would commit to one person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they they're not going to. And you know, for the and for the average, um, if I can say average Philly fan, because you know they kind of out there too. Man. Yeah, I love them, man. It, you better love them, otherwise yeah. they'll kill you. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, but. Um, you know, for the average fan, you know, it's good for them and their, their franchise because it's just not good for fantasy. You know what I'm saying? That's Real all football, it is. yeah, it's Eagles awesome. will dominate all year long. Yeah. They're gonna they are by far and away one of the top Super Bowl contenders. Agreed. Team is amazing. Yeah. Defense is great. Offense is looking great. Yeah. What they're doing is great for real football. Yes. <laughs> for them. Yeah. For us little guys, not so much. Not so much. But hey, you know what? It is what it is. Nothing we can do about it. No. Just enjoy it. Yeah. Close your eyes, pick one, throw them in your flex spot, and hope for the best. And roll on too. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All right. Well, that was it. That's our waiver wire show for the uh, the week of week twelve. We appreciate you guys watching. Make sure you're liking, commenting, and subscribing, mm-hmm. uh, hitting us up with any questions we got. We answered, uh, I think, just under three bajillion questions last week. Whew. It was yeah. close. It was I lot. mean. It took me all the way until last Friday to tally up all of our percentages from the week prior. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, it takes a long time to mm-hmm. go through everything. But, hey, we love it. We yeah. appreciate it. Make sure you guys keep doing it. Uh, check us out on uh, Twitter, mm-hmm. Facebook, mm-hmm. whatever you got. We'll find you. That's right. We appreciate you all. Make sure you guys have a good rest of your week. Yeah. Thanks. Peace.